In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how timelines can help when there are additional payments and withdrawals in an account. Sandy's bank offers 3% interest per annum compounded monthly on her savings account. She opens the account with a deposit of 12,000 Rand. A year later, she deposits another 5,000 Rand. And another two years later, she withdraws 8,000 Rand. How much money will be in her account five years after the account was opened? A timeline helps if there are a lot of things happening in the same account. Here, three different amounts are deposited and withdrawn, so I'm going to make use of a timeline. The question ends with how much money will be in her account five years after the account was opened, and therefore my timeline will end at T5. And now I'm going to add everything that happens from T0 to T5. Right at the beginning, Sandy deposited 12,000 Rand into the account. A year later, she deposits another 5,000 Rand. So at T1, she added 5,000 Rand to the account. And now it's important to notice that the next description says another two years later. The word another here implies two years after the previous amount. So two years from year one will be at T3. And now she withdraws, and that means we are going to subtract 8,000 Rand from the account. And the question is, how much money will be in her account five years after the account was opened? Because each of these three amounts receives the same percentage interest, we can see them as three different accounts. That means we can determine the value of each of these amounts separately at year five. And because we are moving forward on our timeline, we are going to use a positive exponent in our calculations at the interest. So we want to calculate the future value of each of these amounts. So I'm going to start off with my 12,000 Rand and I want to calculate the value of the 12,000 Rand in five years time. And the value will receive the interest of 3% compounded monthly for five years worth of months. And that is five times 12, which will be 60 months. Then she added another 5,000 Rand and this 5,000 Rand also received interest for a specific time. So I'm going to add the 5,000 Rand and determine what it will be worth at T5. So I'm going to add the interest of 3% that is compounded monthly. But the difference is now that this amount only receives the interest for four years worth of months. The last amount I want to move forward to T5 is the 8,000 Rand. But the 8,000 Rand is withdrawn, so I'm going to subtract the 8,000 Rand, as well as the interest that this 8,000 Rand would have received for the time period. So I'm also going to take this 8,000 Rand to T5, and that means it would have received 3% interest compounded monthly for two years worth of months. So even though these three amounts are all in the same account, we can calculate their values at T5 separately and add up for extra deposits and subtract for withdrawals. And now I can use my calculator to determine this value all at once. And that means that Sandy has in her account an amount of 11,000 and 81 Rand and 99 cents after five years. Example two, Louis intends to give 100,000 Rand to each of his three children when they turn 18. They will turn 18 in one year, three years and six years from now. And he will give them the money on the same date as today in each respective year. For this purpose, he immediately invests a lump sum of money into a savings account, which pays 6% per annum compounded monthly. How much must he invest? 
So Louis wants to invest a specific amount now to ensure that in one, three and six years time, he can give each of his three children a hundred thousand rand. And this means that in one, three and six years time, he would want to every time save up a hundred thousand rand in this account so that he can withdraw it. And that means that this time we want to determine one by one what the value of each of these amounts will be at T0. Or put differently, how much should he invest now to ensure that in one year, three years and six years time respectively, he will save up a hundred thousand rand. And because we are moving back on our timeline, we are going to work with a negative exponent in our calculations. So if I want to determine the starting value of the first 100,000 Rand, I know that I will have to remove the interest that it has received for a year. So the 6% that is compounded monthly needs to be removed and that is indicated by the negative exponent. And that will be for one year's months. This calculation tells me what Louis should invest now so that in one year's time it will be worth a hundred thousand rand. Next up I'm going to take the second hundred thousand rand and also move that back to t0 and this hundred thousand rand has then already received three years worth of interest. So again I take my interest of six percent that is compounded monthly and I take away three years worth of months interest. And then I finally also take the last hundred thousand rand back to the beginning. And once again I use my interest of six percent that is compounded monthly and I need to remove six years worth of months interest. And this means that Louis needs to invest two hundred and 47,585 Rand and 27 cents now to ensure that in one, three and six years time he will have a hundred thousand Rand to give each of his three children. Example three. In this example we now have different amounts as well as a change in interest rate. John opened an account on 1 January 2015 and immediately made a deposit of 50,000 Rand. On 1 July 2016, he withdraws 15,000 Rand. The interest is calculated at 7% compounded monthly from 1 January 2015 to 30 June 2016 and at 8% per annum compounded quarterly thereafter. How much money is in the account on 1 January 2017. T0 in this case is 1 January 2015 and here Jean immediately deposited 50,000 Rand. On 1 July 2016 or one and a half years later he withdraws 15,000 Rand. So at T1,5 or one and a half he withdraws 15,000 Rand. The question is how much money is in the account on 1 January 2017. So from 1 January 2015 to 1 January 2017 is two years later. When we now move on to our interest rates, it's important to ensure that your period is the same as the compounding period. The interest rate is constant from 1 January 2015 to 30 June 2016 which means that for the first year and a half the interest rate is constant and this interest rate is then 7% that is compounded monthly. And here it is also important to know then that in a year and a half there will be 18 months. Thereafter the interest rate changes for the remaining time to an interest rate of 8% which is now compounded quarterly. This interest rate is from year one and a half up to two years, which means it is for half a year and half a year consists of two quarters. 
To determine how much money John has in the account on 1 January 2017, we now need to take both the amounts to term 2 and determine their values there. So I'm going to start off by determining the future value of the 50,000 Rand. And the 50,000 Rand goes through two different interest rates. Firstly, it receives 7% interest compounded monthly for a year and a half or 18 months. And then it receives a second interest rate. And I'm reminding you that every new interest rate is simply a new bracket that we multiply. And that second interest rate is 8% that is compounded quarterly for two quarters. The second amount is now the 15,000 Rand, but this 15,000 Rand is withdrawn. So I'm going to subtract the 15,000 Rand as well as the interest that this 15,000 Rand would have received for the remaining time. And the remaining time is the last two quarters. So here I will have the 8% interest that is compounded quarterly for the last two quarters. And this means that on 1 January 2017, John will have an amount of 42,155 Rand and 54 cents in his account.